Hi everyone and welcome to AltVR. AltVR is a non-gaming VR YouTube channel and we are exploring experimental and alternative ways of developing for virtual reality. Today we're going to take a look at the Microsoft HoloLens and we're going to create an augmented reality memory palace. So we have access to this device for the day and this is thanks to TechLab, which is uh, yeah, they're not sponsoring this video, but they're borrowing the, <laughs> borrowing us the head mounted display for this day, and we're going to see what we can create of this. So here are my co-developers who are, have already started this. And yeah, we're going to see if we can memorize the periodic table using the method of loci or the mind palace or memory technique. Uh, and yeah, let's see how this goes. This video is brought to you by Together. Or who am I kidding? I don't have any sponsors. <laughs> Together is a company that I co-founded together with my friends, and we are looking for beta testers. So we created this company to use immersive technologies to enable more people to explore the natural wonders of the world. Through state-of-the-art 360 video and streaming, you can visit amazing natural attractions all over the world. Create an avatar, team up with your friends, and see who can take the best photos of the Northern Lights. Go to together.no or follow the link in the video description to be one of the first people to access Together. All right, so here we have it, the Microsoft HoloLens 2. Now this is basically what people are wishing that Apple is going to release in a smaller form factor and of course with a greatly reduced price because the HoloLens 2 costs a whopping $3,500. This device allows you to see virtual objects in your physical surroundings. So instead of having to create a whole virtual environment in VR for our memory palace, we can just use the world around us. Wow, this you look insane. <laughs> Your eyes look fake. It like looks like you're a robot who has projected eyes <laughs> on uh, on your head. What are you doing? Because this looks like you're creating the matrix. <laughs> I'm currently uh, setting up our Git repository, or I'm trying to check out the correct branch, but uh, Git is being weird. Don't film yeah. me yet. Though. This is, uh, I'm gonna feel like an old man. <laughs> How does this thing work? <laughs> All right, so here we have the periodic table of elements. Now we need to find some visual associations to all of uh, these elements, or I think we're going to do about 30 of them because um, the rest is going to take too long time. So here inside the Unity Editor, we have uh, a variety of objects that in some way work as an association to the various tables or the various elements in the tables. And these is the ones that we're going to actually place out in the space around us using the whole lens too. All right, what are you doing now, Tim? I'm making a 3D model of the Google Chrome logo. Why? Because that's going to be our association for Chromium in yes. the memory palace. This looks good. Thank you, thank you. You will now be employed by Google, I guess. Uh, no, I turned them down. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's so big. What are you looking at now? I am looking at the Google Chrome logo that's currently on the whiteboard. There we go. Beautiful. All right, Abel, what's up? What are you working on? Uh, I'm currently working on implementing the event listener for the gestures. So what we want to do is like, if you make a, a hold gesture, that we spawn the object that we're trying to place in the room at our fingertips. Mm. Um, so from the moment the HoloLens recognizes a hold gesture, um, we want to spawn the object there. And I'm currently working on like, catching that event and then fetching the transform that's associated with that and applying that to the object that we're trying to spawn. Nice. Yeah, that should do it. Right now it's just set to, it has this game object that's empty. That's yeah. the transform I'm using right now. So just by pressing the spacebar, it should spawn like all these objects in turn at that location. Uh -huh. So this should work now? Yeah, but I'm not sure how you press the space bar inside the whole lens. 
Maybe you can use the keyboard sure. still. At least in here, uh, they yeah. are spawning. But they are spawning like uh, hydrogen all the time? Or is it just a name? Oh, yeah. oh I think I've gotten one line of code, I'll check. Under the spawn item thingy, under there. Here? Yeah. So let's try this again. Yes, nice job. Alright, so here we are in the middle of the lunch break in Media City Bergen. So for the first element in the periodic table, hydrogen, I have placed a water bottle as an association to the great and powerful H2O. Next in line, as you can see over here, are a couple of balloons, of course signifying helium. Now I can resize and move these objects about, which feels kind of cool, uh, because you get this weird sense of actually touching the virtual objects, although all that you're actually touching is your own hands. And as the third element, we have a battery. Now, I don't think that this looks like a lithium battery, but it still works as an association to the element of lithium. Moving further here over to the check-in tablet, we see a couple of strawberries. These berries are acting as an association to beryllium, which is the fourth element in the periodic table. Moving further yet, we see this rather semi-poor object of a drill or a bore, which is used for drilling or boring. I don't actually know the difference, but it works as an association for boron, which is the fifth element in the periodic table. Next, we have a diamond, uh, inconveniently placed where someone is now eating lunch, signifying carbon. And for the seventh element of nitrogen, I place some dynamite that reminds me of nitroglycerin. Uh, I can, by the way, add that when I'm doing this recording, the frame rate drops to 30 FPS instead of 60, so it feels quite a lot smoother when I'm not doing the recording, uh, but it still feels quite fine. For the eighth element here, we have a non-textured model of an oxygen tank, which, of course, works as an association for oxygen. And for the ninth element, we have the large tube of toothpaste over there, which acts as an association to fluorine. Fluorine? Fluorine. Uh, I'm not going to feel more socially weird uh, walking over to these people than I'm already feeling recording this. And on this truck-like thing we see a neon sign of a cat, which is acting as an association for the tenth element in the periodic table of the gas neon. Looks very good. And of course uh, for sodium we have a very translucent soda bottle, which reminds us of the eleventh element in the periodic table. Now, if we go further inside the hallway across these toilets here, we have a magnet for the 12th element in the periodic table of magnesium. Uh, yeah, this one looks quite good. And uh, on the door here, we see a beer bottle, uh, looks like a low poly knockoff off of Heineken, uh, which acts as an association to aluminium. Moving further here, I am completely ignoring and walking straight past uh, the silicon association. So we picked a Raspberry Pi uh, as an association for silicon. Uh, I completely uh, <laughs> forgot about that one, so so much for the memory palace effectiveness here. Uh, but it wasn't very hard, uh, it wasn't very easy to see. Now over the trash can here we see a large box of matches and what are matches made of. I don't know, but I think once upon a time they used phosphorus in these, and that works for me. So here you can see a problem we forgot about, by the way, incorporating occlusion into our app. We see straight through the walls here. Uh, but yeah, anyways, the next element is symbolized by an egg, which I think smells like sulfur, uh, and that works for me. And next in line we have some cleaning detergent, which works as an association to the 17th element in the periodic table of chlorine. An absolutely astoundingly beautiful 3D model here as always. Uh, let's just place that right there. And yeah, here we have something very familiar uh, for this video. We have the magnificent HoloLens 2. So I always wanted to try this. Uh, <laughs> now, now, this works as an association to AR, right? Uh, augmented reality, which again works to remind me of Argon, the 18th element in the periodic table. And uh, yeah, this shit doesn't work. I would recommend everyone um, don't buy virtual HoloLenses. So if we go further on here, we see um, yeah, a very interesting uh, table tennis match. So we have a banana, which is rich in potassium, 
and uh, the banana is playing against the skeleton, which is rich in calcium. And we're getting close to the end now. If we go up the stairs, we are nearing the end of our journey. And this association is perhaps slightly far-fetched, I guess, but this is a printer or a scanner, and it works to remind me of Scandium. But I have an even more shitty association, which is this slightly metallic-looking ball. This metallic shader looked a lot better in Unity, but it still works as an association for titanium. So, if we continue with the weird associations, this is the incredible, beautiful 3D model of Van. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's so gorgeous that it doesn't even need a texture. So this Van acts as an association for Vanadium, which is the 23rd element in the periodic table. And lastly, the famous Google Chrome logo, Switch to Brave Everyone, which acts as an association to the element of Chromium. And that was it. Alright everyone, thank you for watching, that was it for this video. If you enjoyed this, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. This will help us reach more people and you'll also be notified when we release new content like this in the future. You can also go on to check out some of the other th stuff that we've done. Uh, this is not the first time we've experimented with mind palaces, we've done this in virtual reality before. Uh, for instance, when I turned my real apartment into a virtual apartment to use as a memory palace before we had any AR gear. We've also done some fun experiments like using virtual reality in flotation tanks, uh, using VR and drones to play ourselves in real life in third person, and yeah, uh, a lot of stuff like this. So please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video, and then I'll see you around next time.